Hello students, in this session we will try to analyze, to explore the deep layers of meaning of W.B. Yeats' poem, The Second Coming. Uh, in our previous session, we had discussed about W.B. Yeats as a modernist poet. We had also discussed the distinctive features of his poetry along with the formative influences on his literary career. And we had also a detailed discussion on the basic concept which just formed the background of this poem, The Second Coming, that how uh, his love for mythology is reflected there in this poem and how the post-war period society is portrayed in this poem and then thirdly that how W.B. Yeats concept of history which he has given in his prose writing uh, a vision is being referred to in this poem the second coming so let's have the text of this poem students this poem is considered to be a powerful poetic comment on the post-war uh, war period, on the post-war chaos, destruction and disorder. And as I have told you in my previous session that uh, W.P. Yeats conceptualized history in terms of two interpenetrating gyres. So now first what this gyre is? A gyre is in uh, simple words is a spiral motion as it is shown in this diagram. This diagram is there to make you people understand what was uh, W.B. Yeats concept of gyre with regard to uh, history. Actually, the W.B. Yeats believed that history evolves or history moves forward in a cyclic process. And according to W.B. Yeats, there are two opposing or interpenetrating uh, spiral motions are there. It means that uh, a one cycle begins from one center and then as that that particular at that particular period the society or the civilization or the mankind it advances it progresses it broadens its uh, itself then what happens it get um, its its connection or its control with the center is lost and then what happens the and then another another um, uh, cycle or another gyre takes place and the antithetical civilization tax takes place. So here we can understand this very concept in this way also that W.B. Yeats has just uh, reflected upon or expressed his views on the rise and fall of human civilizations in his poetry. And what was his concept? That when one phase of civilization is over then another phase takes place. And he believed that one phase takes near about a period of 2000 years means one gyre or one spiral motion just completes begins from the center broadens and then ultimately it is just disintegrated in 2000 years and then the another process the another gyre begins so here he is talking about that very gyre that very spiral motion which was connected to Christianity, which was connected to humanity, which was connected to divinity or the good things or the noble deeds, that very gyre is now getting broadened, getting widened and it is just getting lost its connections with the center. So, Let's begin with the poem. In the very first line, there is the reference to the gyre. Turning and turning in the widening gyre. So students, here the poet is just at the very opening, pointing out towards the a widening gyre. The broadening cycle or the broadening process. And he has just used the word turning repetitively. And this 
repetitive use of turning is to emphasize that how uh, intensely or how quickly that that gyre is spinning that how quickly how swiftly that uh, extension or that widening is moving on and then as the gyre or the spiral motion is just extending it just broadening then what is happening there is a falcon here uh, falcon is a bird but falcon is used as a symbol of humanity as a symbol of civilization we can also say that uh, wb yeats has used falcon as a symbol of christianity and in the at the last of this line there is one another word that is falconer and falconer is one who trains and who breeds a falcon and here with reference to humanity who is the falconer the falconer is the falconer is the soul the conscience or the falconer can be divinity or with if we talk about falcon as a uh, symbol of christianity we can say the falconer is the voice of christ so the point is that that falcon the humanity the civilization the mankind is not able to listen the voice of divinity the voice of christ the voice of the soul means whatever good is going to happen is not being paid uh, or cared for by the the mankind and as now the uh, falcon is just not able to listen the falconer because falconer is standing at the center and the gyre is widening it is just moving away from the center so moving away from the center means all the things when it moves away when it broadens when it ex extends then what happens there is a disintegration now the center is not able to get hold of uh, get hold of the all the things and then everything uh, gets disintegrated to so center becomes weak merely mere anarchy is loosed upon the word so look at the use of word mere here the um, that poet stone is is this a little bit satiric he said that mere anarchy only anarchy only disorder and chaos is just Uh, spread all over the world so this is how wb yeats has just commented upon the destruction the disorder and the chaos which just uh, covered or this um, uh, covered the whole human civilization or the whole world after the first world war and so students in the first four lines wb yeats has uh, presented that how the modern civilization has lost its controlling authority and everything is just disintegrating so what is the result of that in disintegration what is the result of that uh, disorder, uh, disorder or that chaos is being uh, presented in these four lines the blood dimmed tide is loosed so with the anarchy what happened there was blood shed and this blood dimmed tide this phrase refers to the flood which just destroyed the human civilization so he is to say that tide of violence that flood of violence just spread everywhere and what happened in that flood of violence everywhere the ceremony of innocence is drowned ceremony of innocence is for that all the activities which were connected with nobility goodness they were just uh, drowned they just lost themselves that it was the end of goodness it was the end of divinity it was the end of humanity and what happened then what happened the best lack all conviction the best is here for the good people the noble people they lost their faith they lost their confidence in themselves they lost their faith in anything good they lost their faith in any controlling divine authority and on the other hand while the worst are full of passionate intensity the bad people they were full of passionate intensity regarding their 
deeds. They were full of faith and confidence regarding their deeds and regarding their thoughts. So in this way, W.P. Yeats has given expression to the one phase of civilization which is explained through a spiral motion through a gyre that how a gyre begins from a center and then it extends itself, it broadens itself and it, as a result of this broadening and extension there is disintegration, there is chaos, there is uh, loss or fall we can say and in, in the second half of the poem WB8 talks about the another cycle, the antithetical civilization which takes place of this one. And this is how uh, in these uh, eight lines we can summarize. In these opening eight lines of the poem, W.B. Yeats has given expression to his basic concept of history as a cyclic process and these eight lines there is a portal of post-war disorder and destruction and this uh, situation of disintegration and disorder is portrayed uh, very effectively through the use of very powerful symbols uh, as in the very opening line of the poem there is a reference to the gyre so the metaphor of gyre is there and then the sim Falcon and Falconer these are also very powerful symbols to indicate the connection or the relation between uh, Christianity and Christ uh, humanity and divinity so in this first part of the poem uh, WB Yeats has given expression to the broadening and extension of one dad and in the next part of the poem or the closing of the poem he talks about another cycle another antithetical civilization which takes place with the extension or the collapse of one motion so we will talk about that in our next video thank you